I'm tired of the other women. I'm tired of him using me. For two months, I didn't even hear from you. Where were you? I'm overwhelmed, man. I love you. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. He fooled you about 50 times. We are a financial disaster because of him. Divorce doesn't exist where I'm from. Neither one of you is wrong for having your opinions, but it just makes you wrong for each other. There's been a huge breach of trust, according to you. She was on the fast with the pastor. She sent her pictures with a smoothie of straw in her mouth mm. and a Sasha McMuffin. Can I eat this, pastor? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, hold on, why you got to send pictures with it? Here is today's case. Mysterious cash payments secret conversations, disappearing acts. Those are just a few of the reasons this woman says she can no longer trust her fiance. Is he having second thoughts? Or is this all in her head? That's today's case on Divorce Court. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, our virtual audience is filled with your super fans. Today's super fan of the day is Jacqueline from Washington, D.C. Jacqueline, we're so happy to have you with us. Welcome to Divorce Court. Your Honor, this is the case of Small versus Artis. Thank you, Juan. Christina Smalls. Yes, Your Honor. You have brought your fiance, Mr. George Artis. Yes, Your Honor. To Divorce Court. I understand the two of you have been engaged for two years. You are here now to try to resolve some of your disputes before moving forward in marriage or going your separate ways. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, I'll start with you, Ms. Smalls. Why don't you give me some background? Your Honor, I brought George to court today, my fiance, because he's still dealing with other women. Also, he proposed to me two years ago, and I still don't have a ring. Also, I just want him to level up his life with me. We have six kids together, all mm -hmm. together, and I just want us to move past our issues so we can build our future. And all of your children are from previous relationships. You don't that have children great. together? Okay. No, we don't. What do you have to say about that, Mr. Artis? I'm just here to tell my fiance I love her. I didn't propose to her for nothing. I just want her to be in my life and we just, I just build my trust back with her so she can trust me again and we can move on with all this and stop going this back and forth in front of the kids and all that. I'm just ready to move on with it. Okay. It's been four years. That's correct, Your Honor. You've been engaged for two years. That's a long time. That's, That's correct, Your Honor. And you say it's because you've been having some issues during this two-year time period that you haven't been able to resolve, and you hope to resolve them today. Give me an example of what you say has been happening that's caused you to put the brakes on marriage. Well, Your Honor, about two months ago, we went back to North Carolina to our hometown for the weekend. When we came back, something... My woman's intuition told me something was up. So, I went through his phone. Mm. I checked all of the apps, and I seen that his ex had sent him $100 on a money app, and he actually accepted the offer. So, if he received $100, why didn't he tell me about it? Why What's was going it on, thing? Mr. Artis? I haven't seen my ex, haven't talked to my ex. My ex just wants attention, since she's no, and she knows that. Like, she just always try to bribe me with money and gifts, and that was just one of them times she tried to bribe me. So she tried to bribe you with $100 to do what? Just, just for nothing. Just sent it to me out of nowhere. So what do you say happened? Why, you, don't, you don't believe that? I'm gonna tell you why I don't believe that, because he tells me after she sent the money, I requested $100 back from her for her being a stupid bee. The next day, he got the notification to his phone that she declined the offer. He asked me why did I do that, and I was like, well, if she got enough money to send you $100, she could send you some more. And she didn't. But I don't believe that because I asked him to call her so I could ask her why did she send the money. Mm -hmm. He told me that he didn't have her phone number. So how do you don't have her number but she has yours? Hmm. It doesn't make sense. And that is proof of her declining your mm -hmm. request for $100 <laughs> for being a stupid... A stupid being. Mm. Yeah, it's fine money. I just took it. That's all. It was $300. I'm sorry. He won that particular day that he, I guess he received the money, I just didn't know yet. I picked him up from the basketball court. He had won $200 that day playing basketball in the neighborhood. He was so excited to tell me about that. So why didn't he tell me about the $100? Okay, but he says it's innocent. It could be. It could be. But you say that other things have shown up that cause you to, that cause you to still question it. What else has happened? 
So I went through his phone on, on another occasion because I actually I had his password, so I could go through his phone whenever I wanted to. Was it your intuition that day, or you just wanted to be nosy? That day, I just wanted to be nosy, mm -hmm. and I I ended up checking an app, and him and his coworker they were messaging each other. She messaged him, but she asked, "Could she have some? Could she have, have some, some of what?" And then he replied, and he I, he agreed. And then that's when she sent a picture of her child. And I was just like, what is this about? It's a little too intense, like... What was going on, Mr. Artis? I was just smoking on my story, and she just asked it, like, can I have some? Oh, like, okay. That's all that was. And we were at work talking about our daughters, like, do they like our nails done? And I showed her a picture of my daughter while I was at work, mm -hmm. but she sent me her because she couldn't show me at work because we was on the line just talking and gossiping. And she just took it the wrong way and just thought me and the girl was talking. So she was actually saying, can she have some of the product yes. that you were smoking yes. that day? And you don't believe that? <clears throat> no. I don't understand why she would be sending private messages to my fiancé. Mm. I actually messaged her back on his mm. account and asked her why was she messaging my fiancé. Of course you did. So this is a private message. Let yeah. me get some. Yeah, she was talking about the product. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right. <laughs> and you said, all right. Yes, ma'am. It does appear to be they're talking about something. What do you think they were talking about? I have no idea. I was trying to find out. I know she would, because she went and messaged her and deleted the message that she sent to her. What did she say? I don't know. She deleted it, but, uh, but she had wrote back and said, we were just, we just friends, we just co-workers. Like, it's nothing calls? going on. What did you write? I asked her, why was she writing my boyfriend? Okay. And what was her response? She said that they were just having a conversation. She just worked with him. And you don't believe that? No. And that's all it because is. Because why would y'all have a private conversation? Why are you having a private conversation? You both are in relationships. Mm -hmm. And why is she sending you a picture of her child? Is that your child? Do you have another child I don't know about? Why was she sending you a picture of her child? Just to show me that her, her, her daughter like her nails done. That's see, That's what we were talking about at work. She but I brought a screenshot of the message that she, she deleted. She deleted it, but the girl has sent one back. Let me see the message. See, right here, we, somebody, we worked together. I was just letting him know what's going on. That's all. She had already deleted her message that she had sent, and she sent that back on the 12th. Mm -hmm. She said, we worked together. I was just letting him know what's going on. That's all. And I seen that, but I didn't know that she had sent the message first because she had deleted it. Deleted it. Okay, I understand. 5.30 came, no sign of George. I start calling George. He will not answer the phone. Mr. Artis, what happened? It was a rare opportunity. This OMB is one of my favorite rappers from Alabama, and he was just, he was out there playing basketball with us. OMB Peasy showed up at the court. Once in a lifetime opportunity, you're saying? Mm hmm. You, you said that's not the only issue in your relationship. You also said that there's an issue of him being responsible and showing up when he's supposed to show up. George is just very inconsiderate. And he asked one day, could he use my car to go play basketball because he loves to play basketball. I get off about 5.30 every day, and he asked about 3 o'clock. So I told him that he could use my car if he promised to be back at 5.30 because I had errands to run. Mm -hmm. So while I think it was about 5 o'clock, he FaceTimed me in the car, and he was just telling me about it was this rapper that was at the court, and he was out there shooting hoop with them, and he was actually on the way back home. Mm -hmm. 5.30 came, no sign of George. I start calling George. He will not answer the phone. I go check my social media, He's posting on his stories, stories of the basketball player, but he's not answering my phone calls. Mm. He came back three hours later. Mm. I was very upset with him. Mr. Artis, what happened? It was a rare opportunity, Yeah, and I'm sorry. I was just like, I, this OMB is one of my favorite rappers from Alabama, and he was just, he was out there playing basketball with us, and just time had just slipped. We were just talking and carrying on, and yes, I should have answered the phone and just let her know that I was going to be a little bit late. Instead, I just stayed and played and just chill with them. Because OMB Peasy showed up at the court. Once in a lifetime opportunity, you're saying? Once you in a lifetime. You couldn't just pass it up. I couldn't pass it up. Because if, just... if it was Megan or Nikki, <laughs> she would have stayed and I wouldn't have said nothing. Mm. I wouldn't have said nothing. Because you would have understood. Yep. Okay. What happened when you got home? What happened? <laughs> I had to duck, I think. 
she threw something at me, I think. When I walked, when I turned the corner, I think she threw something and I had to duck. Mm -hmm. And she was furious. What else do you say has happened? I had a birthday this year. It was a very big birthday for me. I turned the big 30. I asked George to go pick up liquor because I was having, ki I was having a kid back in the room. And so he was supposed to go get the liquor for us and he left and never came back. Mm -hmm. I was just calling his phone. He wasn't answering. He, he was... never came back? He came back, but it was about, about two hours and a half later. Two and a half hours later? We sat for there your waiting birthday. on him. Mm -hmm. Yes, to bring back the liquor. For and your birthday came. turn up, was Owen B. Peasy in town that time too? Mm -mm. No, he won't. Once she drank, she can't stop and I had to end up carrying her everywhere we got to go. Miss mm -hmm. Moss, are you not able to handle your, your liquor? Once I have one drink, they just keep coming. I found her drunk in my in her car outside my house. How did she get there? I guess she drove herself there, drunk, but passed out. My motto is you work hard, you play hard. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. What is your biggest issue in this relationship? I've heard a lot from Miss Smalls. Are there any for you? I just, I just want her to trust me. It's just she don't trust me no more because of stuff I have and her problem is drinking. Like, really? Her drinking is bad. Like, when she, once she drank, she can't stop, and I had to end up carrying her everywhere we got to go. Like, she drinks bad. And that's the only problem I had. How often is that happening? Like, right now, not as much as it was when we was in North Carolina, but mm -hmm. still, like, if she can go out every weekend, she will and be drunk, mm -hmm. passed out. Miss mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Moss, are you not able to handle your, your liquor? Once I have one drink, they just keep coming. I like to feel good. I'm a full-time mother of three kids. I also work full time. So on the weekends, two of those days is my run to go turn up and have fun and enjoy myself and let my hair down. Every weekend? Not every weekend. At first, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be honest. I was partying every weekend, mm -hmm. but I was also working hard. So my motto is you work hard, you play hard. Mm -hmm. And so I was just turning up, having fun. He could have came and turned up with me, but he'd rather go hang with his friends. So Friday and Saturday nights, you're saying that's your time? That's my time. But are you getting passed out drunk every weekend? Yes. I found her drunk in, my, in her car outside my house. <laughs> How did she get there? She drove, I guess she drove herself there drunk, but passed out. Music blasting, lights on, car on, in front of my house, sleep, drunk. I could not wake her up for nothing. You couldn't even wake her up? No, I, I can I call her phone, and I can see me calling her phone and on her phone, so the music could stop. So I beat on the door when the music stopped, but she when she was too drunk, she was passed out. So the next, so I just let her. I locked the door. I made sure the doors were locked. I walked in the house and went to sleep. And I woke up the next morning. She was gone. So That's how you drunk she was. Drove drunk to his house and passed out in the car. Your Honor, I'm going to tell you what happened. I'm tell you my side of the story. I have been calling him and calling him and calling him, and he would not answer that phone. And it was. It was making me furious. So I'm sitting there drinking and I'm calling him. Drinking and I'm calling him. Drinking and I'm calling him. At this point, I'm upset and I'm drunk. Well, the reason <laughs> doesn't matter. It's the choice that you're making. Not only because you just gave me this whole speech about how you're working full time, you have your full time mother of three children, but then you're engaging in this reckless behavior that can not only impact your life, somebody else's life, all your children's life? Mm -hmm. Because you're drinking and driving and pass to the point where you're passed out, he can't even wake you up. Ms. Smalls, that is, that is reckless, dangerous, irresponsible behavior. And it, it has is. to stop. I don't drink and drive anymore. Mm -mm. When I drink now... friends do. Yeah, I don't drink and drive because I can't. But that particular time, I was drinking and I was driving because I was sitting in the house Sad, mad, upset, crying. So I went to go find out. Well, what was you can't going ever on. let anybody put you in that kind of position where you feel like that—that's your only option. On her you birthday, understand? her friends, her, her, her friend came pick me up on one of her birthdays, and her friend was driving drunk, like, and she was drunk on the passenger side. So they thinking I'm gonna ride around with them. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not gonna ride around with y'all. Y'all, both of y'all drunk. 
take me home. She got, so she got mad because I wanted to go back home. So she, me and her end up fighting in the yard or whatever. Having and, an argument. Yeah, because I wanted to go home because both of them were drunk and she's driving 100 miles per hour through this city where the speed limit is no more than 40. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't play with my life like that. I don't, I don't been in too many car accidents. The two of you got engaged two years ago. Mm. You haven't gotten married. No. What, what is the reason? What's the issue? The issue now is I don't have my ring. Where is the ring? He never bought it. So how did he, what did he propose with? He actually got on his knees crying with no ring, begging me to stay with him and that he promised me he would buy my ring. And it's been two years later and he still didn't put a ring on it. And he knows how important that is to me. So all of these issues you've had in your relationship, he proposes, does that make everything better for you? When he proposed, it did because earlier in our relationship, he started the conversation about marriage to me. She just don't think I'm serious about her, that's all. She think I want to play these kids. Why games. haven't you bought a ring? Because we was, we, recently we was going through financial difficulties, so I really couldn't afford to buy no ring. I think I told her I'm not going to buy her no $50 or $100 ring. I want a ring that she can wear on her finger worth something. Mm -hmm. Like, I just didn't want to buy no setup for no cheap ring. So it's been two years. Mm -hmm. What's been going on? Now, we, we are right now, but she just gave me a deadline to have her ring by December. She said she's going to leave me. Are you going to make the deadline? I'm gonna be, yeah, I'm going to make the deadline way before the deadline. I hope so, because if he don't have my ring by December, I'm a track star. Out of there. But what about what's actually happening in the relationship? Because a ring is not going to solve yeah. any of, your, of the issues you actually have. It's just a piece of jewelry, mm -hmm. cool. whether you wear it or not. Are you really prepared for marriage is the question. I love her. Like, ever since I met her, I love her. I play games, but I just want, to, I just want her to trust me again so we can move on. Like, mm -hmm. without trust, we can't, because she don't trust me right now because of all the little stuff that went on, but I just want her to trust me again. Here's what we know about trust is lost in buckets and is earned in drops. Mm -hmm. Once it's lost, it takes time to earn it again. Mm -hmm. So you have a choice to make. I don't think there's, there should be so much emphasis on a deadline about a piece of jewelry. If you want a ring and that, that's important to you and that makes you happy, that's great. That's my but everything else that's going on before you move into marriage, you're right, you have to have a foundation. That foundation mm -hmm. is based on trust. Mm -hmm. You should be marrying your best friend. So the foundation of trust is built on your actions. What am I doing to show myself trustworthy yes, if it's been broken? So it's about how you live, not what you say. Yes, ma'am. You've, you've been through some bumps in the road in the past. So you decide, you know what, this is our past. It's a part of who we are, but we're not gonna carry it in the future. So what can I do right now to be the best husband because it doesn't start after you get married. You show mm -hmm. yourself worthy of that position now. You show yourself worthy of that position right now as a wife. And you say, what can I do to be the best that I can to bring my best to this relationship? You're not going to do it by drinking and getting passed out drunk every weekend. That's too much. Going out partying every Friday and Saturday night, I expect that from my 21-year-olds, not from you. You're doing too much. And for you, sir, being open and honest and transparent. Mm -hmm. There are going to be a lot of things you're going to communicate about as a married couple. Start practicing that good communication now. You understand? Yes, ma'am. Yes, All right. Yes, good luck to both of you. Thank you. I do need to slow down, which I have been doing lately, you know, with the partying and the clubbing. Also, with the ring, it is just a piece of jewelry. We do have deeper issues that we need to work on. Never have her wondering where am I at or what am I doing, because anything could happen. This uh, communication is the key. I plan on getting a ring for her. Within the next month, yeah, I will have her ring. I'm going to keep him to this deadline. He needs to have my ring by the end of December, because I've been waiting for two years.